There are some very unpleasant consequences of time dilation, and I'd like to discuss some of them with you right now. But before we get into it, I want to point out that the space shuttle, which you think is going pretty fast, it's going 7,700 meters per second. Wow, that's really fast, right? Uh, which is, I don't know, 17,000 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. Okay, but what about as a fraction of the speed of light? Turns out that the space shuttle is going the speed of light divided by 39,000. Okay, that's pretty darn big. Oh, this isn't one of those European commas. That's a real comma where like, I'm just saying that that's 39,000. Okay, <clears throat> so I want to figure out gamma because gamma is how much relativistic the situation is. I want to figure out gamma for the space shuttle. You remember that the definition of gamma is 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta square. And so if I plug this in, I'm going to find that gamma is equal to 1. But the problem is my calculator just can't handle squaring 1 over 39,000 square and then subtracting 1 from it and taking the square root of that and then the inverse. Ugh can't handle it. So what I have to do is the binomial expansion. And I'll remind you that the binomial expansion says 1 plus x to the n is approximately the same as 1 plus n times x. I mean, it goes on here, blah, 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 blah. But the first term is that. Well, the first term is 1, of course. It's kind of like 1 for small x, whatever. And um, <clears throat> we do have, oh man, we do have a small x here. But let's look at this. I want to write this in a slightly different way. I want to say that uh, gamma is, well, it's 1 minus beta square, and that quantity is to the negative 1 half. Do you see that those are the same thing? Okay, great. Then, um, I want to assign some things. If I'm going to use this expansion, I need to identify that n is going to be negative a half, and x for us is going to be negative beta square, because that's 1 plus negative beta square, which is our x, and the exponent here is negative a half. So I need to make this expansion. It looks like this is going to, gamma is going to be about, let's go to a different color here so we have a little bit of contrast. I'm plugging in this expansion. I'm saying it's approximately 1 plus, now I need to do n, which is minus a half, and then I need to multiply that by beta squared with a minus sign, negative beta squared, and then I'm going to plug in what beta squared is. So I'm again making this approximation, and I'm going to say it's 1 plus 1 half v squared over c squared. And we're saying that the speed of the space shuttle is 1 over 39,000 times c. And if I then can cancel out the c's, this is 1 plus 1 half. Oh man, do I just have to have 1 over 39,000 squared right here? Sure, 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 that's fine. And it's going to say, the calculator is going to say it's very small if I add it to 1, but let's think about the difference. Let's just look at this term right here, and that turns out to be 0 0.000000. Ooh, let me count those zeros. Hang on. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 zeros before there's any business. 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 3. Ding! That is a small number. So the space shuttle does not experience much relativistic effect. So this is, ooh, can we get an equation that uses this gamma thing? It says the time that you see on the space shuttle is the time that you measure on Earth where we're not moving, but who's to say who's moving and who's not, times gamma. So I'm getting a correction to actual time by this number right here. First of all, we realize that relativistic effects are kind of rare and rather special. Secondly, if two people experience time differently, then they will disagree about the time between two events. Somebody who's sitting here and shooting off firecrackers is going to say, pop, with one of them. And then they'll wait 10 seconds. And then they'll set up another one, and they'll go, pop. But if you're zooming by on a rocket ship, right? If, let's make this an actual rocket ship, not a fish. If you're zooming by on a rocket ship going, I don't know, 87% the speed of light, then you will see this time as much what? Much shorter or much longer? Remember, you on the rocket ship think that they're moving. So if you're looking on the rocket ship, 
you're just peeking out that window. Hi, that's you right there. You're peeking out the window. You think that the biological process of this guy is much, much slower, so you might think that that process takes 20 seconds. So you can no longer agree about how much time it takes between two things to happen. Frankly, you don't even think these happened at the same, whoa. Well, maybe you do. Let's see, here's my concern. This guy has a nice perspective on the pop pop because both pops happened in the same place. And we're gonna actually say that that's a very special time. That's delta T naught is the proper time because it's between two events that happen at the same place. Proper time is very special and you can always find the proper time in a circumstance. In fact, proper time is always the shortest possible time between two events. Because anybody who's not thinking that they happen at the same place, this guy will not think that those two events happen at the same place because he's moving by them. He sees one event and then sees another event happening much further back. So the proper time is measured by the guy right here who's setting off the firecrackers. He's probably got a, a mohawk. And he is measuring the shortest distance between the two events in time, the shortest time distance, because his location is special. Is that fair? All right, and then maybe we even have to back up and say there are things called events, and we no longer agree about when they're happening or where they're happening if we're moving fast. This is extremely complicated. Also, there's another unpleasant consequence. On Earth, in the upper atmosphere, wispy up here, there are muons that are being created when stuff is hitting the upper atmosphere from space. See space stuff hitting the upper atmosphere? And we get these muons created. And they're created way, way, way up there. They're created like five kilometers up. The thing is, the muons are really light. And they, some of them, not all of them, of course, they're, they kind of are produced sort of all over the place. Some of them tend to head this direction and they're moving really fast, 0 0.995 times the speed of light. But the thing is, a muon is not stable. Not stable, can't handle it. So since the muon is not stable, it will decay. But the problem is, the muons don't get to live very long. In fact, they only live for long enough, wait a second, they only live for 2.20 times 10 to the negative sixth seconds. So perhaps you'll notice that if, whoa, if they are created five kilometers up and they only live for this time, that none of them will make it to the surface of the Earth. Dang, they're only gonna go 657 meters. Try it out. The distance that they go is the speed that they have times the time that they get, and this time times light speed, C is, I mean, we. So this is just about light speed, right? Whoa, as long as we're not pretending there are any relativistic effects. That is just about light speed, which is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. But the point is, they're so incredibly short-lived that they will never make it to the surface. But if you're sitting down here watching television, you are, in fact, getting hit. Here's the light getting into your head. And here are the muons plopping onto you all the time. Muons do make it to the surface of the Earth, and this is huge proof of relativistic time dilation because the muons are moving really fast. They do not experience as much time as you do. So although they only get this much life, it's from their perspective. Uh-oh. Perspectives on time? Sounds like a jazz album from the early 50s, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I think it does. Enoch Light would be part of it. Okay, so you've got, <laughs> you've got muons that are living for longer than they ought to. And in fact, they're going much, much, much further than they ought to because their gamma is big. You could calculate their gamma at 0 0.995 times the speed of light, and you'd find that they're allowed to live for much longer. Now, here's the thing. If we're saying the faster you're going through space, the slower you're going through time, that's what Einstein wanted you to think of. He said, you've got a velocity vector, and you can either move through time, that's what you are right now if you're 
you're sitting at your computer, get up and live a little bit. You could also move through space. If you're moving with maximum speed through space, you're not moving through time at all. If you're moving with maximum speed through time, you're not moving in space at all. So sitting there like you are is making you go through time really fast. But if you start moving, you go through space really fast. Wait a second, what goes through space at the maximum speed? Light, good answer. Light does not experience time. Light is created and destroyed at the same instant from its own perspective and it's created and destroyed at different locations. So light experiences only space. Goodbye.